Welcome back guys, this is Rajiv Kogan. Thanks for checking in. I wanna walk through a few features that I just came across that we could expect to be in the next flagship by Samsung, the Galaxy S9. So the Mobile World Congress is just around the corner next week and we're about to see some new cool tech. One of course is the yearly flagship that gets launched by Samsung, it's the Galaxy S9. And of course Samsung's known for actually pushing their boundaries and you know, setting new comfort zones. So in this case, they're focusing on the camera. Hence, reimagine the camera. And don't get me wrong, sometimes they fail, sometimes they do awkward things like putting the fingerprint sensor in the back in the most awkward position. Not sure who actually thought, you know, putting this fingerprint sensor slightly to the right of the actual camera would be the most optimal spot. It's not, clearly, no one liked it, but you know, glad they figured it out, glad they realized that, you know, the most optimal spot is the center, dead center, and uh, that's what we could expect in the Galaxy S9. And again, you know, there, there, there's small mistakes, there's big mistakes, like phones blowing up, but at the end of the day, we see new flagships every year by Samsung, and every year these guys do what they can, you know, to blow the consumer's mind apart. and. This year, they're focusing again on the camera. I'm excited because these three teasers that were just released a few days ago kind of, you know, set the expectations that Samsung's pushing the boundaries again with their, you know, the lens, the actual software processing, and what the capabilities are. So let's just quickly watch it, and I'll walk through a few, uh, you know, scenarios of what I feel like is gonna be the game changer for these flagship camera features. So as you can see with this teaser, it's a no-brainer that the new camera sensor will expose a greater aperture with possible an f-stop of 1.5. Now what does that mean? Well, the phone will allow more light, you know, technically into the camera, allowing for better low light shots, and I'm sure it's gonna be accompanied by a better software processing tool, you know, to push better clarity as well as faster focus. Now this one's my favorite. We're definitely looking at something what's gonna be rumored as Samsung's super slow-mo feature. Apparently we're looking at 960 frames per second, taking ability. That's insane. And you know, this is not new. It, Sony's XZ last year featured this and it's not like it's impossible. So hoping, I'm gonna cross my fingers that these guys do not compromise the quality. I wanna make sure these guys can hit the 720p. Otherwise it becomes very, very, very useless. Um, nobody wants anything lower than that. Uh, some sort of HD resolution at the 960p would be the most optimal setup. Now this last teaser, you know, kind of targets the iPhone X, uh, maybe the phone itself, but the users who got pulled into the technology that was provided by the iPhone X. As you can see, it's flipping through different selfie shots, you know, bringing the fun aspect to it, and they go straight to the end. And then what it looks like to be is their own version of the Animojis. But it looks like they take it a step further by automatically detecting your face and creating a 3D avatar of yourself. So it's kind of like a bridge between Bitmojis and Animoji. Now in order to get this Animoji avatar technology put in place, most likely they have tech that's equivalent to the true depth camera as you can see in the iPhone X. Now what that means is there could be a possible Face ID competitor that's going to be introduced in this version of the Galaxy S9. And you know, I'm glad, I'm glad these guys are actually putting that tech in because their iris scanner and their face scanner the technology they had was just bogus. I never used it, it's not secure. I was okay with just using the fingerprint sensor. So keeping the fingerprint sensor and then adding also a facial recognition technology, uh, you know, I think it's, it's worthwhile. And now these guys are going head to head with the iPhone X. Okay, now in terms of the hardware, let's talk about the hardware a bit. They are adding a new color line called the Lilac Purple. Cool, I'm probably not gonna get it, but it's definitely a new color they're adding to the line of products. And for sure, there's nothing gonna change in the form factor, especially with the leaks, you can tell that the form factor is the same, except the back here, they kind of shifted where all the cameras and the fingerprint sensors are. And in the front, apparently it's gonna have a 90% ratio to screen to bezel. So what does that mean? You're probably gonna take a little bit of the top and the bottom of the bezels, knock it up, um, and giving you a more screen real estate, which is, no, not bad. It's, it's amazing these guys keep pushing these standards. It eventually gonna get to a point where it's just gonna be fully screen, right? And that's the cool part. And now in terms of the inside, it's supposed to have a six gigabyte RAM. We're looking at the latest chipset, which is the most exciting part, the Snapdragon 845 processor. What that technically means is that it's faster to obviously accommodate the new tech with the camera. It's gonna give you way better battery efficiency. They're looking at 30% more efficient, but this chipset has way more capabilities. Not sure if they're gonna have all the features available in the Galaxy S9, like the AR tech and whatnot. So 
I'm just excited that they're putting the latest tech in, which is key, and they're not compromising on the actual RAM and it doesn't affect if they change the battery or not. It would be awesome to have a bigger battery life. If not, to be honest, I think the chipset does its purpose of actually making it more efficient and we should have more battery life, so that's not bad. Now, in terms of the difference between the phones, there's the S9, there's the S9 Plus, we're keeping those two lines, and the back will pretty much have one camera on the S9 and dual lens on the actual S9 Plus, kind of what you saw on the Note 8. What that kind of gives you is a wide angle and a telephoto lens. Now, the cool thing about the tech on the camera is it's supposed to have a shifting aperture so when you hit a low light scenario you're going to get a 1.5 f-stop and when you're about to hit you know a regular daylight shot you're probably going to get a 2.4 2.5 so not sure what the actual stops are going to be but we can expect tech that allows you to take the shots you need to do in terms of the situation you are in and good news we're still going to have the headphone jack and unfortunately bad news we're going to have that crappy bixby button Again, these are all rumors, speculations, leaks. We have no idea what's gonna happen next week, but guaranteed based on those teasers, we can expect an awesome camera packed cell phone package. And I'm sure in order to accommodate those kind of tech, they're definitely gonna have the processor upgraded. So I'm excited about that. Hoping it's true that they stick to the six gigs and it's on some kind of international cool version that we're never gonna get. Apart from it being launched uh, next week, February 25th, Sunday, it's called the Unpacked event at the MWC. Apparently, March 1st, you can pre-order, and apparently, March 16th, it can start shipping. So, within the next three weeks, we can actually have this phone in our hand, so I'm excited about that, to review it, check it out. And that's about it. I just wanted to you know, walk through the three killer features in the camera that I'm excited about. That could be a game changer. Uh, and other than the fact that I can finally unlock without having to struggle. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. This is Rajiv Coogan, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Check me out.